Just imagine for a second you are in Scotland. What do you see? Maybe nature, rain, castles, bagpipes, or messy. There's a lot of things that come to mind when you think about Scotland. And I think that you can all agree that whiskey is also up there somewhere in that list. In fact, Scotland has over 140 distilleries. And I'm sorry, but that's kind of crazy for a country with only eight official cities. I was actually in Scotland recently. It was my first time there and I really, really enjoyed it. Now I do like whiskey, so of course I had to do a tasting. And you know, I tried some more and then, you know, like I had to compare different uh, distilleries. There was a lot of drinking. But it got me thinking, why is whiskey such a big thing in Scotland? The biggest whiskey brands that serve millions and millions of people from all over the world are all from this tiny, rugged piece of land. And after doing some reading, I found out that a lot of things happened in order for Scotch whiskey to be as big as it is today. Good things happened, sure, but the Scottish people also faced a lot of challenges on the way. This whole video is basically just an excuse for me to drink whiskey, by the way. That was whiskey. I'll never leave you. Why do you feel so frisky? Okay, let's first look at the current situation because I want you to understand how insane this actually is. Every second, 44 bottles of Scotch whiskey are shipped overseas. Every second, literally while you are watching this video, countries from all over the world are importing massive amounts of Scotch whiskey. As a true Scotsman, I also enjoy a good whiskey. No, not Scotsman. I said Scotchman. Cheers, everybody! Now, this didn't happen overnight. In fact, if you were in Scotland around 600 years ago, there wouldn't be any whiskey. Or maybe there would. I don't know. It's kind of a gray area. Let me explain. You see, the art of distillation has been around for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks already used it to make perfumes. And this knowledge found its way to Europe and from there to Ireland and Scotland. The most logical explanation is that traveling monks spread this knowledge around. And these monks, well, they were making whiskey or at least a very early version of whiskey. So why did I mention this gray area? Well, we don't know exactly when the monks started. So there's a first mention of whiskey at some point in history, but who knows how long people were making whiskey before that. That first evidence comes all the way from 1494, from the Exchequer Rolls, which is basically a fancy word for tax receipt, let's be honest, where Friar John Corr ordered enough materials to make 1500 bottles. Yeah, that's a lot of whiskey. By the way, the word that was used on these rolls was aqua viti, which means water of life. And that was the word people used to describe strong alcohol. Literally, water of life. People really liked alcohol back then. So we know the relationship between Scotland and whiskey goes back a long time, which is, spoiler alert, a very big part of the success nowadays. But I'll explain what I mean by that in a bit. After whiskey was introduced in Scotland, the popularity kept growing. Whiskey. Whiskey. Old Scotch whiskey. Whiskey. Blended Scotch whiskey. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Absolutely fantastic. And man, a lot of things happened. A big one was that taxes were introduced. Because as you know, the British Empire kind of had a thing for invading other countries and going to war. So in order to fund all their wars, sometimes taxes were raised, including the tax on whiskey. What followed was a period of illegal distilling, smuggling, violence, and whiskey gangs. Now what's interesting is that these things obviously had a massive influence on whiskey, and it's a big part of the history, but it all happened within Scotland. While Scots were rioting over whiskey tax, smuggling whiskey, and fighting for their rights, the rest of the world had no idea what Scotch whiskey was. Wine, sure everyone was drinking wine or brandy which is distilled wine and even if people drank whiskey it was probably irish whiskey because all the way until the late 1800s ireland was actually the number one whiskey country whiskey's up and 
drop of whiskey that never saw neither water nor excise man neither. Every day in life, at least once. <laughs> and that's why we have to talk about this guy, Aeneas Coffee. He was an Irish inventor, and it was thanks to his invention that Scotch whiskey was able to completely surpass the popularity of Irish whiskey. The coffee still, as it's called, was a column still, which allowed for a continuous, faster, and more efficient production of whiskey. You see, before this invention, whiskey was exclusively made in pot stills, and that process took a lot longer. Also, the taste of pot still whiskey was a lot harsher compared to the softer grain whiskey that came out of the coffee still. Scottish distilleries started mixing that harsher pot still whiskey with the softer grain whiskey. And the result was blended whiskey that was a lot easier to drink. And this is where the Irish made a fatal mistake. They refused to make blended whiskey. They thought it wasn't real whiskey and they stuck with their pot stills. Now what they didn't know, and nobody knew at the time of course, was that whiskey would very soon experience its first golden era. This was a time when a lot of people would experience their first sip of the water of life. And it was all thanks to this little guy. The upper class from France, from the UK, from all over the world really, they drank wine or brandy. Those were the drinks. If you threw a party, you better made sure there was enough wine and brandy. 1860 to 1875, something happened that destroyed large amounts of vineyards, which also meant there was no wine and no brandy. There was a plague all over France, and it was this insect called the Phylloxera aphid that ruined all the grapes. Obviously, people went looking for something else to drink, and they decided to give whiskey a try. Now, at this point, they basically had a choice between Irish whiskey or Scotch whiskey. And I don't think this will come as a surprise to anyone, but a lot of people prefer the softer taste of blended Scotch whiskey. And this was the turning point. This was the moment that a lot of people were introduced to Scotch whiskey, and it quickly started building up a reputation. Now this golden whiskey era finally ended in disaster. Whiskey stocks started coming down, and over the next couple decades, we saw World War I, the prohibition in the United States, and the Great Depression. People lost their jobs, and many distilleries closed. Some would never reopen and were lost forever. As bad as that sounds, the Irish had it even worse. On top of everything, and roughly in the same time period, they also went through the Irish War of Independence, a civil war, and a trade war with Britain, which cut off all their whiskey exports to their biggest market. When the economy eventually bounced back, the Irish whiskey industry didn't. From there on, nothing or no one was holding back Scotch whiskey, and very soon they became the world's largest whiskey producer. Millions are choosing Scotch as their drink of choice. The fascination with this mysterious and magical spirit has grown exponentially in the past two decades. The Scotch on the rocks, please, any Scotch will do, as long as it's not a blend, of course, a uh, single malt. Glenlivet, Glenfiddich perhaps, maybe Glengow, any Glen. And that brings us to today, a media-centered world where advertising and branding is so, so important. I want to show you something. So this is a bottle of Scotch whiskey I got as a present once. And I'm never going to open it because it was way too expensive and I'm probably just going to look at it forever. But if you take a look on the box, like they wrote their whole story on the box, the history of the distillery. They don't have to do that, but it gives the whiskey something special. And that's also what makes Scotch whiskey so famous today. Not only have they mastered their craft, they also have this incredibly rich history, which is a gold mine for storytelling. You're not just buying whiskey, you're buying a story. You're buying 600 years of whiskey history. Busca Bay, the water of life. Scotch whiskey counts for a quarter of the UK's food and drinks exports, um, and, and whiskey really uh, in Scotland is, 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 is out in front. By the grace of nature, from the hands of skilled craftsmen, 
Thank you so much for watching. I leave a like if you want and subscribe if you're feeling absolutely crazy. Yeah, have a nice day and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.